Vitamin D is a pro-hormone that has gotten a lot of publicity in the last several years. We now know that there's a pandemic of vitamin D deficiency, particularly in the northern hemispheres and particularly in the wintertime when there's not much sunlight because that's what we need in order, in order to make enough vitamin D. Most of us don't realize that the time that UVB rays are there, which are what we need to make vitamin D in our skin, is between 10 and 2 in the daytime. And vitamin D can't be made in the presence of clouds or fog or smog, and it doesn't go through glass. So we need to be out with our skin exposed, and in these days when we have so much the way of, of the cancer scare and overuse of sunscreens, the vitamin D deficiency rages on. An interesting article in the Journal of Leukocyte Biology in May of 2012 showed that vitamin D protects against a lot of things including virus, virus infections, cancers, and autoimmune diseases. This is a big breakthrough. And with the low levels of, of vitamin D deficiency that we have, or high levels that we have of deficiency, we need to pay a lot of attention to that. What we also know is that supplements work. Uh, when there's no sun, or particularly if we're old, because as our skin ages, it makes vitamin D a lot less efficiently. Some of the places where we should be paying more attention to using vitamin D supplementation is in our hospitalized patients, particularly those in the intensive care unit where they don't get UVB light and where their immune systems are compromised to begin with. Unfortunately, our MDs don't have enough in the way of nutritional skills to be able to uh, know how to use a lot of these things like uh, vitamin D in their practices. The way that this works uh, in our system, as far as the immune system is concerned, is that when we have adequate levels of vitamin D, we have a nice balance between the two mechanisms of our immune system. The one mechanism is making antibodies, which are very uh, effective little uh, chemicals that go throughout our body and are able to attack certain kinds of things that shouldn't be there like uh, viruses and, and, and other substances. Uh, the other is a cellular kind of thing, not mediated by antibodies at all, by, by lymphocyte cells. They're called the natural killer cells or, or the TH uh, or the or the cells that are like the T4 cells that we're talking about so much in immunocompromised people. When we have insufficient vitamin D, we have an overemphasis on the production of antibodies and an underemphasis on the production of cells. And this leads to poor defense against viruses, which require cells to be able to kill those viruses, and cancer, which also requires cells uh, to be able to kill the cancer cells, and to the development of autoimmune diseases, because they're mediated by what? Too much in the way of antibody production. So when we shift that tendency from making antibodies to shifting to make cell immunity, we're doing something that will protect us against virus infections, cancers, and autoimmune diseases. Now, in an 11-year study that was done on 1,600 patients, it was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in May of, this, of the year 2012, they found that people who had levels below 20 nanograms per milliliter, which is quite low, had more fractures, more heart attacks, more cancers, and more all-cause all mortality, particularly in the elderly. So now that we know that we can increase our vitamin D intake, if we need to, by measuring it first and seeing what our level is, we'll probably protect ourselves against this, this rampant epidemic, epidemic of diseases that is now all over the place. <laughs>